Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this week's episode of Gazetta Dello 5. It's like the transfer summary. We got here Rio Ferdinand and, of course, Mr. Fabrizio Romano. Listen, you have to talk us through, man. The top five transfers so far in this window. What happened? Uh, we have many, eh? We have many to mention, but I'm surprising you. I don't have Pierre Obama Young into my list, so he's not in my top five. I'm starting in first position. I go with Luis Diaz to Liverpool. In my opinion, they did incredible business and they show how good they are with the strategy. In 24 hours, they completed the signing. Once Tottenham were going with a second bid close to sign Luis Diaz from Porto, they jumped into it. Uh, they were planning for the medical. They've been very fast, very smart. And so congrats to Liverpool because they signed a fantastic winger for 40 million euros plus a don'ts, important don'ts, but it's 40 million euros. And I'm sure if you want to buy this boy in the summer, it's maybe 70 or 75 million. So they've been very smart. It's my favorite transfer. The second is Dujan Vlaovic. Dujan Vlaovic, I love this move from Juventus. It's a statement from Juventus. We are back and they were needing something like, <laughs> like that. And so congrats to Juve because signing Vlaovic in January on a permanent deal. It's not a loan with obligation to buy. It's a permanent deal uh, for 75, 80 million euros. Is a super message from Juventus. Is, is he worth it, Fabrizio? Let's, let's be honest with you. Are you sure he's not a little bit opinion, overrated? Yes. Would you not say? No? No, no, no. In my opinion, he's worth his money. Yes, trust me. Trust me. Maybe he was not oh. ready to do his move to top clubs like Real Madrid, Man City in different countries that he doesn't know and different leagues that he doesn't know. So it's the perfect step for the player because maybe one day he will be ready for something different for different leagues. But now he was needing, in my opinion, also to stay in Italy and to prove himself with Juventus that is completely different life and pressure instead of being a Fiorentina. So it's a very good transfer, in my opinion, for Juventus. And just, just, just a minute, Fabrizio, to go back to the Luis Diaz quickly. Yes. You said that um, Liverpool, after they saw Tottenham going in, they reacted. So was he always on their radar? Were they going to always go in this window? Or was it because they thought he potentially could go to Spurs? They thought, right, we have to react and get him now. I'm told that the plan from Liverpool was to not sign any single player in January. So they wanted to continue with the current team they have. Then what happened? For this boy, for Luis Diaz, uh, the information I have is that they sent their scouts in 2021 five times to watch this boy closely to, to have an impact on, on this boy, to see how he was working uh, face by face. And they loved him. And in particular, the Jurgen Klopp, after Porto clash with Liverpool in Champions League, say to the scouting team, this boy is special. So they were not planning to sign him in January, but in the wow. summer. But they decided to anticipate this deal in January because they said that Tottenham were going really big on him. They offered 35 million euros and Porto said no, they were prepared to do a second bid for 40, 45 million euros. And so they were getting closer. And this is why Liverpool decided to jump into it, to offer him Champions League football, uh, Jurgen Klopp, 4-3-3, that is better system for a winger than 3-5-2. So it was very good also for the player to move to Liverpool. And this is how they did it in 24 hours. So congrats to them. Um, I just want to focus on them a little bit more. 14 goals, four assists in the league for Porto so far this year. Uh, two goals in the Champions League, four in the Copa America. Is he the potential replacement for Mane? My answer is yes, to be honest. Uh, I think that they know that they have a dangerous situation with contracts. So they are working for Mo Salah as priority. But from what I'm told, for Mane, they are not even in conversation yet. And he's out of contract in 2023. So I'm not saying that Mane is leaving Liverpool, but they are not talking over new contract at the moment. So there is a serious danger. And signing Luis Diaz means, OK, we are going to have a fantastic winger to add to our team now. Imagine when you're playing with, with Salah and Mane as wingers, but then at minute 60, 65, you have Luis Diaz entering into the game. Fantastic. It's perfect player for this kind of, 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 of football for, for Jurgen Klopp. But at the same point, is also a player for the future. If you will need to sell maybe money on day, you have Luis Diaz. He's absolutely ready to be a star. So why did Tottenham miss out then? Because Liverpool offered Champions League football. Because okay. Liverpool offered uh, Jurgen Klopp playing with 4-3-3. That is the perfect system for a winger. While Conte is playing 3-5-2, that is completely different. Mm -hmm. And because they offer a lot of money. Because 40 million plus 20, 25 million euros at once. Potential package around 60, 65 million Tottenham were not arriving to this money. They were around 45, 50. And so Liverpool offered a lot of money, but also Champions League football and 4 3 3 system. So who is your number three, Fabrizio? Number three favorite signing? Bruno Guimaraes. No. Bruno Guimaraes to Newcastle. Because for the message they sent, uh, in my opinion, it's really important, was really important for Newcastle to sign, okay, experienced player like Trippier, Hood, okay, good, good, good signings. 
But Bruno Guimaraes is a player, in my opinion, for clubs that play Champions League final or Champions League semi final. He's a player who can play everywhere. He's a top, top midfielder. What type of player uh, is he, Fabrizio, for people that don't know? Uh, he's a he's a physical midfielder, physical midfielder, but also with a lot of quality. He he knows how to play. He knows how to play the ball. He's always super, super focused. His mentality is a winning mentality. He's Brazilian, but he seems German play, kind of German player. Okay. Uh, so this is why he's special. He has the quality, but he's running around the time. Super aggressive player. You need these players if you want to change your your situation as Newcastle need to do. But in particular, because Juventus and Arsenal were already in talks with his agents to sign him in the summer. And Newcastle were going big on him, spending a lot of money, 50 million euros, eh? plus, uh, including get on. So it's 40 plus 10. But what they showed with this signing is we can sign players ready to be top stars and bring them to Newcastle immediately. So mm. top signing, in my opinion. And I'm hearing that uh, the fee, uh, well, Lyon are going to get an 8 million euro bonus as well from this. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's, it's 42 plus 8. This is the current fee, yes. Okay, awesome. Number four. Number four, I go with Donny van de Beek to Everton. I love this boy, I love this player, and I'm sure that he was needing something fresh. So I don't know, Rio, if you agree with me, but I'm really happy for, uh, for Donny for this opportunity with, with Everton. He was really close to join Crystal Palace. Eh? He was really, really close. But then when Lampard uh, was, was going to sign with Everton, he immediately called Donny in the morning. He was pushing to have Donny at the club. Uh, and so he was very, very good at convincing the player. They offered 100% of the salary to Man United, loan fee. Crystal Palace were not paying any loan fee. They were covering 85% of the of the salary. And so this is how Everton did it. But I'm sure that Donny van de Beek is still a fantastic player. We didn't see him for two years uh, as a starter, as a regular player. But I'm still thinking that he's a fantastic, fantastic midfielder. You know, I, I, I was lucky. I, I, we had Donny on the show a while back. And um, I've um, been able to kind of stay in contact and speak to him quite a lot. And um, I spoke to him over the over this uh, this deal as well, and I think that over the, that, that period of time, um, and obviously Frank Lampard, I think, was a big driver, but also Patrick Vieira was a big driver for him because he respects sure. both. Um, but I think obviously staying in, in being able to live at home still in Manchester, not having to move his wife, his girlfriend's pregnant as well. Um, these are factors that I thought played a part as well, but also I think. The important thing for Donny van der Beek, yes, is to play games, but I think as important is that where he's going to be played. Um, I think if you're going to ask him to play the similar roles that he played for Man United, which is maybe a little bit more defensive at times, etc., et then you're not going to get the best out of this player. You have to give him license to go forward, license to attack the box. And judging on what he'd done at Ajax, he was allowed to get into the box and he had free reign to get in there and time his runs to get opportunities to score goals. He knows how to score. He knows how to play one and two touch in progressive possession-based football. And I think Frank Lampard, um, in his short time as a manager, has tried to make his teams, teams play football um, the way that someone like Donny van der Beek might be able to flourish. I hope it works for both of them. Yes, and, and I think a, a, an important point on this on this deal is that, as they did for Martial and for Amadi Allo, there is no buy option because May United want to keep an eye on these boys with a new manager. This is the, 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 the way they want to do. They want the new manager to decide on Donny van de Beek. For example, imagine if Ecton Hag is joining in the summer. I'm sure that Donny van de Beek will be part of his plans, for example. Or maybe another manager like Pochettino will take a different decision. So they are going to decide together with the new manager. And this is also why they decided not to sign any player in January. Because they had some opportunities. They had Zakaria on the table for many weeks. Boubacar Camara, Marseille midfielder, was offered three days before the end of the window, so three, four days ago, to Man United. And they said no because they didn't want to spend any money in January and they wanted to wait for summer and to decide with the new manager what kind of signings they want to do. You know, you know what's interesting as well, though? Can you elaborate on how much um, Dennis Bergkamp has to do with it? Because I only found out the other day that he, uh, Donny's married to his daughter or with his daughter. I'm, I'm not sure which one, but is, does he play an agent type role or what, what is it that he, he's doing for Donny? No, no, no. I'm told he's not in agent role or this kind of things. Maybe he suggested him about a Crystal Palace, good opportunity, mm -hmm. okay, but um, was not playing any agent role. No, no, no. Donny decided with, with his agents. And um, as Rio said, it's true that also Patrick Vieira was pushing. Also, Patrick Vieira had a conversation with Donny about the possibility to go to Crystal Palace. But Man United told them, we sell the player to, we offload the player to, to Everton, not to Palace, because they're paying the world salary and they're paying a loan fee. So this is why 
at the end also with Lampard, it was happy and was a perfect solution for, for everybody in the deal. Who is number five? Number five for me is a signing of Felipe Coutinho to Aston Villa. Because I'm sure that maybe now we, we lost a bit of magic around this deal because it was two or three weeks ago. But I'm sure that he's a very good one. He started very well. I'm told it also from, from some people into the club that in training, he seems really happy, super happy with Steve Gerrard, super happy with the atmosphere. Uh, he was close to Coutinho, agents. Uh, they say they never saw Felipe happy and ready to fight as they see him right now. So a few years ago, a few weeks ago, he was suffering at Barcelona because he was not even uh, considered as a key player. Now he's back as a star. He was needing some fresh air. He was needing maybe Premier League football. And so I really think that he's a very, very good one for Aston Villa. They did a fantastic window, in my opinion, with Dean, with Coutinho, uh, also with, uh, with Chambers in the last days of the window. Yesterday afternoon, while many clubs were busy with panic buy, confusing situations, they posted a tweet around 6 p.m. saying, OK, we are done. We are happy with our players. And this is showing the strategy, you know, this is showing that you are doing things in the proper way. So congrats to Aston Villa because I see a very, very good project there. Who do you uh, think, uh, sorry, Joe, who do you think uh, Fabrizio had the best window? Which club? In Premier League, I would say Aston Villa and Liverpool. This is my idea. Aston Villa and Liverpool. Do you know why I'm smiling is because I wrote Coutinho off big time, big time. You know what I mean? And yeah, Rio was telling me, you know what I mean? I, I have to hold the L Fabrizio. But yeah, you know, I hope he does well. Um, I want to ask you, Fabrizio, which are the two transfers that failed, that nearly transfers, and why did they fail? What were the biggest ones, please? We can mention Fabio Carvalho to Liverpool. Uh, this was a deal that was almost done, was for next season, but they wanted to sign him immediately. He had the medical yesterday night in Liverpool. The boy was in Liverpool to, to, the, to do his medical. Everything was completed. But they had problems to sign all the paperwork because they were in conversation till 8, 9 uh, in the night. Then they found an agreement, but we, they were not able to sign all the paperwork to loan the boy again uh, on, to, to, to Fulham because he was going to complete the season at Fulham. But I'm told that Liverpool are, are confident to, to do it uh, also in the, uh, in the coming weeks uh, to complete everything and sign him as free agent in the summer and pay the compensation to Fulham. He's a very good player. Eh? I'm told that Jurgen Klopp is really appreciating him and wants him and the future, as future player of Liverpool. So Fabio Carvalho, but was really one step away from being completed and they were not able to sign all paperwork. And the other one is Usman Dembélé. Because Usman Dembélé, till the last minute, Barcelona were trying to find a solution for Usman everywhere. They offered him to Paris Saint-Germain on Sunday night, but no way to find an agreement for a swap deal. Uh, they offered him to Tottenham yesterday, but Tottenham were not interested in paying huge salary and huge commission. So a lot of money around Dembélé deal. And so they were not interested into this, this deal for final hours. He was offered to Chelsea too, but let's see if they will be interested in the summer, not for January. So Dembélé was really close to leave Barcelona, but at the end, it was not working. So let's see in the summer what happens because he's going to be a free agent. Um, I also want to look at the fact that Jesse Lingard stayed at Man United. Now, obviously, it's, it became imminent, imminent for him to stay because of the Greenwood situation, which is an ongoing situation. And, you know, we, we, we don't know what's going to happen over there, but we do know uh, that Jesse, he had to stay. You know, was he pleased with that? What was the actual situation over there? No. He was not happy with, this, with the decision. He, I'm told that he had a conversation with Ragnik asking him to leave and to have an opportunity to, to decide between Newcastle and West Ham. Then I'm told that Man United were absolutely not intention to open any talk with West Ham because, of course, they didn't want to give Lingard to, to, to collaborate in competition with them. But for Newcastle, they were prepared to pay a huge fee for, for, for Lingard, for a player who is already out of contract, so they can sign him for free for next season. So they were prepared to pay immediately. But Man United, after a board meeting, they decided to go against uh, Lingard uh, to, to leave the club so they decided to keep him uh, also because as you mentioned Joel uh, they need a player in that position with Greenwood out now and so it was a no it was a no but the player is not happy he's going to leave as free agent and I think that West Ham will come back for him that Tottenham will be in for him in the summer so a lot of opportunities he will take his time but Lingard will leave as free agent I, I wouldn't be happy if I was a player I mean it's, it's, it's almost like he's wasted a whole year of his career the whole season of his career has been wasted. He, isn't, he hasn't played hardly any games, hasn't been involved. He went to West Ham and done re fantastically well. Everyone would have wanted to take him outside of probably the top four. And then goes back to Man United, doesn't play. And I, 
I was just baffled that he actually went back to Man United in the first place after having a bit of that taste of success, that taste of playing every week. Um, either he was promised by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that he'd get more game time. I don't know what it was. And then, obviously, this window, you think that he'd be doing all he can to get out. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe he, t- he took too long in, in getting to that point of wanting to leave. Did he ask to leave at the beginning of the window or make a decision later on in the window he wanted to leave? And then by then... Um, other situations took it out of his hands, maybe. I don't know, but I just look at his, look at his career and you just think the last last year, he's probably a year or two just been wasted in his career by just sticking around at Man United when he's never going to play games. It's just crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess like you said, Rio, sometimes players might also think that they can do it. When you went to QPR, you know, you said when we were talking to Mark Noble, fantastic video, guys, make sure you watch that after this one. You said mm. that um, you felt like you could still do it at QPR and, and maybe that was the same for Jesse. Yeah, I, don't I, wanna... I, don't, I just think you don't, uh, you don't, you don't, we don't know the details of his, as you've been promised that he was going to get game time and it didn't materialise. Mm. I don't know, there's so many things that we don't know. That's why you can't really go full force on, on any of it, really. Yeah, I, I, I'm just moving on really quickly. Can you give us an overview of the Abamyang deal? Because it looked like he was in Spain, just walking around. You know what I mean? Like, first of all, I thought it was cancelled. <laughs> then it wasn't. Then it was going to be a swap for Dembele. Then Dembele was going to go Chelsea. Fab, what happened? No, swap on the, with Dembele was always impossible because the player was not even interested and Arsenal were not paying what, he asking, what he's asking. So it was impossible. But what happened is that Arsenal didn't know about Aubameyang flying to Barcelona in the morning. At the end, it was a smart move from, from, from Obama Young because he was ready to take his medical in the night. And so it was a really complicated deal around lunchtime because Barcelona were asking Arsenal to do a long move uh, with an obligation to buy, the only thing that they were able to do. But from Arsenal, the answer around 3 p.m. in the afternoon was, we are not putting one single pound into this deal. We are not going to collaborate. We only want Obama Young to leave the club and we are not collaborating for the salary or for anything into this deal. The only mission is Obama Young out and stop. So at that point, for Barcelona, it was difficult to find a solution because the salary of Obama Young is a huge one. And for Barca, we know how complicated is the financial situation. At the end, they had a conversation with the player. I'm told that his salary for the remaining part of the season will be around 2.5 million euros. So he's going to take a big cut of his salary, pay cut to his salary because it was really huge. And then he's going to have a bigger salary for next season. But this was the only way. So they were able to change the situation around 6, 7 p.m. and then to do the medical and sign the contrast. But really confusing deal. I'm still thinking of Barcelona old style, to be honest. Every time I see this kind of signings, I think, I don't know, Rio, what you think about it as a, as a legendary player. But I remember when Barcelona, signing for Barcelona was like a dream for players, you know? Mm. Only few players in the world were available for Barcelona move. And now it seems they can sign everyone. Yeah, Middlesbrough the forwards there, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. It's mad. It's yeah. Absolutely- I mean, no disrespect to the players that are going there, but it's like, it's, it's very different now. It's like Man United, very different type of players that are going there and the players that they're in the market for. I think Barcelona, they're in a rebuilding process. I think Xavi's looking at it like it's somebody who's got something to prove wants to play football, has experience um, and maybe can fix the, the style that he wants, fit the style that he wants to play. That remains to be seen, but he has a lot of young players there that he's building the team around, Xavi, that he does need experience. And maybe someone like Aubameyang, who he probably feels that he can rein in and refocus, might be an asset. So I, I wish him good luck because I think for both parties, Abamia needed to leave for, for his sake, for his footballing sake, but also for Arsenal's sake. Because they, you don't want, as a club, a player hanging around who's not really wanted at the football club by the manager. Mm. Um, Rio, a, another guy that you know you want to see do well. Deli Ali moves to Everton. Mm. Frank Lampard's like you, man. He thinks he can get something out of him. Yeah, I think I think Frank does feel that. I've, I've spoken to Frank while we was uh, um, over the last couple of days, and I'm. Um, Listen, it's no secret, I think, at Everton that they need bodies in the middle of the park in the midfield. They haven't got that the legs, the dyna- dynamic players in there. He signed two players that can move around the pitch, but also know how to get goals and know how to affect games if they're given the confidence, if they're given the platform to perform. And I think that the way Frank wants to play, the 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 reports out of the first training sessions have been very positive. Everybody's rejuvenated, happy, looking forward to what's going on. It looks very promising there, but... Their, their first league game is against Newcastle away. A huge game in the Premier League. Massive game for both clubs. So, uh, look, we have to wait and see how it unfolds. But I think Deli Ali has something to prove. 
Van der Beek has something to prove. I think they're positive signings. Last one, Fab. I want to ask you. Phil Jones moved to Bordeaux, had collapsed. What actually happened there? I thought he was on his way out. They had an agreement, the two clubs, Bordeaux and Man United, for a long move. But then the player was not 100% convinced to go to, to Bordeaux, was not happy with the solution. So he decided to turn down this, this, this move. It was surprising also to me because from Bordeaux, they were really optimistic to get it done on, on deadline day. But Phil Jones said no. They tried again in the morning on deadline day, calling him, trying to and to find a solution for, for, for Phil Jones, but it was a no. So May United decided to, to make this, the, the, the negotiation collapse, but it was impossible to convince him. He wanted to stay, and so this is it. They signed a very promising boy, Ahmed Odzic. Remember this name because one day mm. he played in, in Premier League. Very good player. Bosnian centre-back from Malmo. Mm. Wow. Listen, guys, that's it from us for this week's Gazeta Delo 5. Make sure you let us know the moves that you wanted to see happen for your club. And also, do you have any questions for Fabrizio Rio? Uh, let us know. We'll be back soon. Make sure you subscribe, like, share, comment, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Ciao.